Hi everyone, Tanya Peel here with Respiratory HQ and I wanted to do a quick little video about quality control procedures for a blood gas analyzer. As you're taking your credentialing exams, you may experience a couple of questions dealing with QC of ABG machines or the Levy Jennings report. So I wanna kinda of give you a very concise, easy, quick example of what this all means, okay? so. When we're talking about this, there is a difference between quality assurance and quality control. So quality assurance is just the overall program to make sure the lab is putting out tests that are, are correct and accurate as possible, okay? So whether it's a blood gas lab or a lab in the hospital, they have a quality assurance program. However, when we talk about quality control, quality control is part of that quality assurance program, but quality control is the, the tests we're doing on the machine itself to make sure the machine is reading things accurately. So when we're talking about quality control of an ABG machine, we wanna make sure it's in control. And so these standards are set by the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendment, CLIA, that's probably an organization to remember, okay? And really the main thing you need to get out of what CLIA demands from a blood, blood gas lab is you must analyze one sample of quality control material every eight hours. And that is um, a common topic that is visited at times on the TMC. All right, now remember when we're talking about the blood gas analyzer, we're wanting to make sure the electrodes analyze correctly. So we have a pH electrode, which is a SANS electrode, a CO2 electrode, which is a severing house, and then a PaO2 electrode, which is the Clark electrode. So quality control is making sure each one of those electrodes is reading accurately. All right, so when we're talking about making sure a machine is in control, we have automated tests that the machine will put itself through. And these are one and two point calibrations. One point calibrations are typically automated every 30 minutes. Two point calibration has to be done that um, every eight hours. Again, that's automated within the machine. Occasionally, however, we are going to take commercially prepared controls. We're gonna actually take glass ampules that have um, a solution in it, let's say for CO2, it, it has a solution of a CO2 that we run through the blood gas machine to make sure the blood gas is going to, the machine is analyzing that sample correctly. All right. So all of this data, whether it's one point calibration, two point calibration, commercially prepared controls, we can put all of this data on um, a statistical chart called a Levy Jennings report. So it's, a, uh, it's just data, we're making sure we statistically analyze it to see if there are any out of control situations because if we have an out of control situation, we can't trust that blood gas. We can't turn it in, um, any, any um, exam results in for clinical decision making. So all this data is again plotted on that Levy Jennings graph and these graphs are regulated by something called West Guard rules. West Guard rules um, just named after the, the man that developed them um, and it's just really statistical patterns. But you do need to know a few of these statistical patterns. Okay, I'm going to show you the most common ones. One of the th first things to remember about a, Le a Levy Jennings report is that the, the values must be within plus or minus two standard deviations of the mean to be considered in control. All right, here is what that means. This is a Levy Jennings report for CO2. Let me get my ink ready. All right, so if we say the mean for CO2, the absolute perfect normal is 40, we're going to call that the mean, okay? So see where 40 is right here and that line is the mean. And so when we are running samples, 
every sample we run has to be within one to two standard deviations above and below, or within two standard deviations above and below that mean. So we go 40 is the mean, two standard deviations above would be 42, two standard deviations below would be 38. So if you look between these two lines, as long as all of our plots are in between that range and see how they all are if we follow this all the way to here it is here and here it is here all of those are within that two standard deviation so this is what an in control co2 electrode looks like within that two standard deviation okay let's look at some out of control issues uh, out of control. This would be an out of control issue, a random error. Now, we got to be really, really careful. Random errors can pop up that are within three standard or within three standard deviations and they're okay. So let's say that we ran one control. Here's 40. 42 is the mean. And let's say it's between 42 and 43. Let's say this one over here popped in right around there. Random errors happen statistically, okay? And if it's just one, occasionally it's not a big deal. It's just a warning, keep an eye on it. But if we look at this one, let me erase that dot. If we look at that, this one right here, you can see 40 is the mean, here's 41, 42, two standard deviations. But see how this random error, it just popped out of here, but it's above three standard deviations? Okay, if a random error, one control is outside of the two standard deviations, but really even higher than three standard deviations, it is out of control. So this dot here is an out of control situation. It's called a random error. And typically causes for that are improper storage, sample contamination, and sample mishandling. All right, here is another out of control situation called a shift. And so if we're going to look, we still have our two standard deviation. Okay, so 42 okay, and 38, so between those two lines. And you see most everything, everything that's green is within that two standard deviation. But do you see these dots? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. All of those in a row are on one side of the mean. This is a shift. It is a shift in that mean value above where it normally is. Okay, so we, if anytime we have five to seven, of those situations that are occurring on one side of the mean, it means that it has shifted the mean. That is an out of control situation. So this is what a shift looks like. And it's caused by maybe aging electrodes or inadequate maintenance to the blood gas machine. Okay. One other situation we want to talk about are trends. Trends are out of control situations, okay? So if you have five to seven consecutive runs where the values are trending in a certain direction, so if you see these, do you see how this each and every one is a downward trend? So this is a trend situation. It means the machine or that electrode is out of control. It could be that the electrode's getting old. Maybe can, we have some contaminated buffers. Maybe there's a little protein contamination of the electrode. But basically, this is considered out of control. So I think if you know those three basic, a normal Levy Jennings within two standard deviations, if you know what a random error is and a shift in a trend, that probably covers most everything they may ask you about blood gas QCs. So hope that's helped. See you soon.